Despite being the highest rated Pixar film on Metacritic, Ratatouille feels comparatively overlooked these days. At least personally, I hear very little compared to WALL-E, UP, and Toy Story 3. However, there is an obvious reason why this film in particular resonated so much with film critics upon release. It is perhaps the most effective take on the concept of criticism in cinema. Just like Hollywood is drawn to movies about performers, it makes sense that critics like their own field being discussed. This is a bit funny, because the lead antagonist of Ratatouille is one of their own. I know people who even view this film as a condemnation of criticism. But the concept of criticism goes much deeper than those who write reviews. Ratatouille remarks upon the several forces at play, with each set of characters representing a certain force in the reception of artistic creations. Critical thinking is essential for making better art, just not necessarily in the way Anton Ego provides. The film opens with a news clip on Gusto, a five-star chef and best-selling author of a book entitled Anyone Can Cook. This phrase is repeated throughout the film and often misconstrued. Anton Ego writes it off as a shallow populist statement, stating that not just anyone can cook. Yet the film has Gusto himself clarify in a clip. While he believes anyone can cook, only the fearless can be great. So what he's really saying is that anyone is capable of cooking while still believing there is a certain level of effort required to become good at it. The misunderstanding seems widespread enough that the other antagonist, Sue Chef Skinner, is able to manipulate Gusteau's image to sell branded products after his death. The Uniquely Magnificent is used to promote explicitly lesser works. But where Skinner's exploits can be written off as part of a capitalist machine, Ego's comments reveal him as much shallower than his presented image. For him to misconstrue Gusteau in such a way implies he literally judges the book by the cover. Throughout the film, he repeatedly asserts this idea that he already knows the quality of something before engaging. Ego is a questionable critic, one blinded by his preconceptions. As such, most of his observations are surface level. In many ways, he fits in well alongside certain online film reviewers who simply point out plot holes as if that's valid criticism. Ego is in this business for seemingly little more than attention, making grand statements that falter under close inspection. Though he's not explicitly a critic, Gisto is still someone who got where he is through application of critical thought. But where Ego uses his position to assail creators, Gusto uses his experience to better inform others about the act of creation. It's this ability to recognize what does and doesn't work among the material provided that lets an inexperienced creator evolve into a great one. Gusto is especially talented in the fact that he can express his critical knowledge in such a way that it has meaning to the common man. In this film, his actual teaching is so universally resonant it even manages to reach the low level of a rat. Remy is a rat that aspires for more, among a population that will literally settle for garbage. The other rats are mindless consumers. As long as it isn't literally poisoned, they are happy to eat. They have no knowledge to truly differentiate between a good and a bad meal. Food is simply a mechanism of survival. Remy has a certain natural edge, gifted with a strong sense of smell. His eating of food seems to trigger synesthesia. Yet even with his knowledge, the ability to create is inaccessible. While anyone should be able to cook, certain people, or in this case rats, don't have that privilege. So, where does Remy's attention go as soon as he receives those tools by stumbling across Gusteau's kitchen? Remy isn't happy to simply make better meals for himself and he doesn't appear to consider using his unique talents to better the experiences of his own family. He sticks around at the restaurant as soon as he hears that a critic has loved his first creation. Rumi wants validation. Specifically, he wants validation by those he deems worthy, those he believes have the critical knowledge to tell a good dish apart from a bad one. This is why Anton Ego is able to operate as the primary antagonist, despite Skinner acting in a more malicious manner. It's not that Ego is a villain, but that he's the one Remy himself places as an obstacle to his goals. 
Ego not only has the ability to dash Remy's dreams, he can also be a valuable ally in making those dreams a reality. When Remy is reunited with his family, the first thing he does is try to explain the appeal of good food to his brother. What's interesting here is that, however briefly, Emile seems to get it. As Remy describes the tastes, Emile has a similar synesthesia-like response. It fades away, but there's a suggestion that Emile, like anyone else, can appreciate a good meal. What many people overlook is that learning to appreciate a better creation is also a skill that requires development. No one is born with an intrinsic knowledge of good versus bad, but Remy quickly gives up, more interested in those with the privilege to already be capable of appreciating his work. Remy's focus is obviously flawed. He creates almost exclusively for the upper class. In a rather disturbing sequence, his father Django tries to spell it out for him. They stop outside an exterminator with a gruesome display of dead rats in their store window. Remy creates for a populace that would kill him on sight if they knew who he was. But Remy counters this. He believes his creations can be a gateway to a better understanding between human and rat. To create is to change the world around us, something that can destroy barriers in the right hands. So, how does Remy manage to create in such a hostile environment? Simply put, he has the lucky fortune to meet someone of that upper class who recognizes his talent. The bumbling Alfredo Linguini offers no true talent in his own right, but he is in the position to give Remy a platform. Linguini is simultaneously a benefactor and exploiter. By appearing as the public face of Remy's abilities, Linguini likewise receives upward mobility. Their relationship is perfectly summarized in an early scene where Remy makes breakfast. Linguini quickly consumes his meal, but drags Remy away before he can eat his. And this is after first assuming Remy ran off with some food. What do all of these elements add up to? Creation is used as a status symbol by many. Throughout the first two acts of Ratatouille, creation is a weapon to separate the privileged few from the other. Remy can only find validation in himself by putting on the mask of something he is not. He recognizes his position as an other, and simply aspires to shed that appearance. The third act of Ratatouille seeks to tear down that conception. When Ego arrives at Gusteau's for the final showdown, he asks the waiter for perspective, a request he refuses to define. He speaks in Haydn language, purely for his own amusement. Meanwhile, Remy and Linguini encounter turmoil in the kitchen. Linguini finally admits that Remy is behind everything, causing a mass exodus when the cooks realize their head chef has been a rat. Unfortunately, a great work can lose appreciation due to the origins of the person behind it. Instead, Remy is able to call upon his family, who finally recognizes the determination in his heart. Remy finally elevates himself to a great chef, as in, he is able to teach even the unfamiliar the proper way to cook a dish under his supervision. In this way, Remy's creation bridges the class division that previously defined this kitchen. Anton Ego is surprised to see that his meal is ratatouille, a common peasant dish. Yet when he digs in, he's completely enamored, briefly finding his mind racing back to his childhood. Remy's creation appears to tap into a certain universality. He's no longer grandstanding, but creating something to be properly consumed by anyone. Anton Ego recognizes that this isn't a simple populist appeal, but rather a considered work that utilizes the right ingredients to be able to speak to anyone. Anton Ego has a change of heart and delivers his famous speech, cutting down the sort of negative reviews he has offered throughout his life. He redefines his purpose. Criticism should not be a weapon to tear down others, but to build up those with a seemingly impossible ability to create something uniquely universal. Similarly, Remy reevaluates his own goal. His purpose shouldn't be to impress, but rather to bring a better experience to anyone he can. In the end, he begins making food for both the human and rat populations. If a critic should use their position to draw the attention of the masses, then so too should a great artist ensure their works can remain accessible 
to those of any class, which, again, is not to argue that creation should be dumbed down to the lowest common denominator, but rather to seek out universal truths while creating something within your own language. In the end, Ratatouille is such a resonant film because it hits upon why we care about cinema while talking about something completely separate. It is calling upon its own message of universality by subtly connecting the specific creation of food to all other forms of creation. Likewise, it is an appeal to positive criticism, not as a means to ignore flaws, but to better the world around us. Ratatouille is a family film that earns its optimism. It gives us a reason to believe we can always improve ourselves while reminding us that such a feat requires effort. Ratatouille is a fantastic family film because it takes a simple narrative and embeds every aspect with subtle thematic purpose.